Human resources employees what are your best hour nightmare stories? I'm on the hour team that supports a wide variety of us cities for our company, including our colorful Florida locations. This is the best story I heard. We had some woman trying to avoid doing work by sitting out in her car in the parking lot. While she was hiding out there, she needed to use the restroom. Well, instead of going back inside or doing literally anything else, she decides to pee out her car window. Even though I'm also a woman, I was impressed and disgusted by the physics behind this feat. She had stuck her bare ass outside the window and just went for it. Unbeknownst to her, her male co-worker had arrived at work late due to an appointment. He drove past to find a parking spot as this was happening and got full view. He then reported the incident to us. One of our our people had to investigate this, and sure enough, parking lot cameras could corroborate his story. Our our person confronted the woman. Her response, well how did he know it was me? It could have been anyone. We thought, okay fair enough. The cameras aren't CSI grade zoom, so we only saw the ass part. It was harder to completely identify the face. So we went back to the male peer, and asked how he knew it was her. His response? Oh it was definitely her. The face tattoos are pretty recognizable. We definitely don't get paid enough for this. Came into work early for a morning shift, work in an industrial lab. Heard noises from the back corner of the office portion of the building, but can't make out what they are because of distortion. Head that way to see what was going on as I was the only one there, so I thought, at 3am. See my lab manager fucking the district manager, her boss, while the hour rep for the district is sitting there, enjoying the view. I noped and went to the lab and tried to forget what happened. Saw a guy blatantly lie in his recruitment form, watching him fill it out in front of me. It was total bollocks. Apparently he was 15 thin line to the throne, went to Eton, studied at Oxford, and served in the army for 9 years, after training at Sandhurst. Not bad for a 21 year old, who had in fact spent 3 years in a young offenders institute, battling a drug problem. My job is a constant owl nightmare. Boss has slept with Kawakura. Kawakura is married to Kawakabi. Kawakabi plus A have been married, unhappily, for 10 years or something now. B has no idea, even though B invites boss over for dinner once every other week. Boss is now dating new Kaoka, my best friend lol, and has already gifted her $2,000, despite another Kaoka suffering from cancer and barely being able to pay the bills, when he was still working. My other boss, who owns other lesser half of company has called me a narcissist in a meeting, told me literally there are no such things as business ethics. That's barely the past couple months, been there for 4 years. Sorry, not ours, we don't have one. My friend was doing hiring for a staffing agency during college. A guy who we went to high school came in looking for a job. He told the candidate that he had two jobs. One paid 10 an hour and the other paid 11. The only thing was that the 11 an hour job requires a drug test, and if you fail the drug test you can't get either. He said that he wanted the 11 an hour job. Now we knew him well enough to know that he liked smoking. So my friend reiterated the drug test fail rule. Dude said he was good on Friday to take the test Monday. Come Monday he took the drug test, pissed hot for weed, cocaine, amphetamines, and some other shit that gets out of your system in 48 hours. I was sitting in the hour office with one of the members of ours. I was waiting on her to finish a form so that we could go eat lunch. Suddenly, this guy comes in, he was a young temp employee, and had only been there a week or so, and says he has something he needs to talk about. I start to get up to leave, when he blurts out, that he doesn't like that fact, that there are so many gays and lesbians working in the company. Once he says, that I sit right back down. The hour employee asks him to clarify, and he goes on about how his trainer was gay and his team lead is gay and his manager is a lesbian, all true, and he doesn't feel comfortable working around all these gays and lesbians. The hour employee asks him as anyone has ever sexually harassed him, which he says they haven't. She then says, so you want me to fire these employees, strictly based on their sexual orientation, just so you don't feel uncomfortable? He says yes, after which she tells him to leave the office. She then calls in his manager and talks with her about it. He ends up quitting by the end of the week. 
I work in recruitment so not exactly ours. A guy had applied for a job that required a DBS check. Police check. He filled the DBS and all his other checks flew through. The DBS came back as he had committed a crime in the past. Now now and only the guy who will be applicant manager and a senior in our department can see the DBS result. He called the department and happy the job had been withdrawn. He then sent a long email in begging for another chance. He said when he was 17 he beat two women up then threatened the cops with a gun. We're in the UK, so guns are pretty rare especially in the 1970s he went in to detail about the attempted rape this dude wanted a job in a hospital. It's a no mate. My friend who worked in ours told me about her old job, where the boss had drilled a hole from his office through to the ladies changing rooms, and was perv whacking it every chance he could get. They found out, because someone saw the light through the hole as he took the cover off for a peek. He denied everything, and they had to take a DNA sample from the carpet under the hole which confirmed it was a, him and B, that he had indeed been whacking away. Not in ours, but my previous senior manager was renowned for sleeping with colleagues. He was married with kids. Before I started there I remember seeing a huge banner plastered across a footbridge that everyone leaving work by car had to drive under to get to the motorway. The sign said, Joe Bloggs, not actual name, cheating bastard. Turns out he was cheating on his wife with a team leader from another dept and was cheating on his mistress with another team leader from yet another department. Both the team leaders found out about each other and had a massive fight in the reception of the building. By the time I started at the company both of the team leaders were no longer working there. I used to work for a company that is an hour nightmare. Several events occurred. I was hired as a director of quality slash regulatory, so I come in and start sprucing up documents, policy and all the essential stuff. A VP of sales doesn't take too kindly to fixing the stuff they were lying, fraught, about and tells me in front of ours. I'm going to make you so miserable that you quit this job still works there. Another sales guy went into a coma, health issue, and the higher ups decided that they could fire him to keep their insurance cheaper and not pay out his life insurance. Luckily ours pointed out the potential lawsuit after they debated the cost of the lawsuit and whether they could win they kept him on until he passed a week later. When I left, I had my own company they decided they owned any IP I created when I was employed there. I had no contract and non-competes aren't legal in my state. The SEAL level employees all were convicted of corruption in multiple countries and are in jail. I don't work in ours, but I do have a nightmare hour story. When I was on my gap year I worked a part time job as a fitness instructor at a leisure center. One of my coworkers, call him Bill, was a nice guy and I would often sit and chat to him on my breaks etc. Long term GF and baby at home. As part of my job I used to teach spinning classes on a fairly regular basis. I would normally leave my phone in the staff room while I was teaching or behind the reception desk. Both these places were secure and my phone had a passcode on it. I didn't want it going off while I was teaching because the when it received calls slash texts it interfered with the stereo in the spin studio. I didn't have a locker or anything where I could store it. Sometime in around January I was at uni for an interview weekend. My girlfriend at the time had come to pick me up and while she was waiting in the car she was scrolling through my messages on my iPad. When I got in the car she showed me one of my chats and said why did you send this video to Bill? I had no recollection of sending any videos to Bill since I did not speak to him outside of work beyond I'm going to be late or similar. I thought it was a mistake, but as I scrolled further back up I saw that I had sent this same video to Bill a couple of weeks prior. Feeling thoroughly perplexed I clicked into the video and saw it was a video of me, 20F, and my girlfriend, 26F, on holiday in Thailand. I'd like to stress that it was not a sexual video, we were just joking around, but we had just got out the shower and were both naked. At this point I'm still thinking it's some kind of big mistake as Bill is a nice guy with a baby at home. However, I look a little closer and realize that the dates slash times of when I had sent these videos was at times I was teaching spin classes and therefore had left my phone unattended. Bill, being the sicko he was, had the obviously seen me put my passcode into my phone during all the times we had been sat chatting on breaks etc. and had memorized it. 
He had then taken the opportunity to scroll through all my personal photos and videos when I had left my phone and attended to go and teach classes. I'm assuming that he had deleted the video once, hence why he had sent it to himself again a couple of weeks later. He'd also deleted the chat history from my iPhone, but hadn't realized it synced to my iPad. This was in around 2012 BTW. I would only have been about 18 over 19 at the time when the videos were taken. Obviously I reported this to my manager in 2 hours, but it was a bit of minefield for them to navigate. I don't know what he told them, but I imagine it was along the lines of saying I sent them to him of my own free will, how would he have known my password etc. It took a long while to get sorted, but in the end he did get sacked, thankfully. The police also paid him a visit, so I'm sure he had some explaining to do to his so. The workers had races with those motorized forklifts. One did not know that there was freshly poured concrete. Got the forklift stuck in it, damage was 100. Zero euros, big foundation for a new storage facility. According to the union contracts, such damages are paid for by the company, unless it was intentionally done. Walked into my boss's office, told him about the situation. HMOK Shadavi, can you please return to your office for a while? Okay. As soon as I was at my desk, I heard the loudest got the damn to she's from his office. Then my phone rang, and he told me to inform the insurance, which ended up paying less than 10k of the damage. Otherwise, the usual hour nightmare is just people not keeping their documents in order. I had a bookkeeper that paid himself two checks every week. We did not catch it for a year. Another bookkeeper quit and files for unemployment. He then claimed a claim with the ARC that he had a disability and we failed to make accommodations for him. The disability was alcoholism, and the accommodations were leaving early to attend AA meetings. Seriously, we had to hire a lawyer to fight that. A guy I hired hurt himself on the first hour of the first day of work. He claimed he fell and hit his head on the wall. He was out for weeks on workman's calm form the concussion. Then when he came back on light duty, he could only do desk work, but managed to fall again in the bathroom and hit his head again. It took me 9 months to get rid of him. It turns out this was not his first rodeo, when I called his former employer the lady I spoke to made an offhand comment about workplace accidents and head injuries and the importance of cameras in the workplace. While doing a remodel of museum, one of my employees helped himself to a gun that was on display. It was very ugly and embarrassing for everyone. My company was kicked off the job and banned from ever working for them again. I fired the guy and he filed a discrimination claim with the ARC because I did not fire the whole crew, just him. I got more. Once upon a time I was an hour manager. This is my worst story. Once I had a dude who looked great on paper for a mid-level role at the large non-profit I worked for. We were a houselessness and addiction rehab shelter. Easily the type of resume for our operations depth which made us all think oh this guy looks good. He could be management material someday with these type of credentials. I phone interviewed him and thought oh yeah, the team's gonna love him. We set up an in-person interview. I wasn't able to sit in on the in-person interview, so the director of that depth and his best slash longest standing employee did it. Apparently when the guy first showed up and was asked if he'd like anything to drink, he asked for a bourbon on the rocks. Kidding. And everything went downhill from there. According to the debt director and the other employee, the interview went immediately terrible and the guy kept floating things like, but I bet you're not going to hire me because of. They felt like every answer from the guy and every question was meant to be some sort of herbal trap he was laying, so they cut it pretty short. Later, the guy called me back directly, he had my office hash, because I had used it to phone interview him, and left a VM. He started by saying essentially thank you for the opportunity, but I really didn't appreciate how you guys clearly didn't want to hire me, because I'm a male slash I'm too old slash I'm a father slash I have a chronic medical issue slash I was an alcoholic 10 plus years ago slash I was once homeless slash etc etc. All of these are verbal traps, and I'm 100% sure he was trying to trap us, so he could disparage the organization and sue us. 
I can say definitively that none of these were true. We weren't thinking of any of these things, and we were damn near ready to hire him before the interview had he done as well as he did on paper, and in the phone interview. The only reason we didn't hire him was because he was clearly a malicious psychopath, and it was pretty clear he wanted the organization's money, but had no intention of doing any real work, besides an hour of interviewing, to get it. I had to bring the issue up with our seer and CFO, and we drafted a very clear statement in return, which I left by voice email and email. Dear Mr. Thank you for the opportunity to interview you. In response to your prior communication, we feel it very important to clarify that we have not yet decided on a final candidate for this role, and as we discussed in both your phone interview and your in-person interview, the only consideration we will make when deciding on a final candidate is whether one's professional qualifications match the needs of this role. Thank you for your time. We will keep you informed on our final decision. Sincerely. I had a friend working at GM when I thought it was a good idea to test everyone on the skill set needed for their department regardless of how long they were in their position. Long careers, 15, 20, 25 years were ruined because even though they worked there for a long time with a long string of great performance reviews, they didn't pass the test that measured what I thought was required for the department. Say you're a materials expert working in a design department. You may know barely enough in the CAD system to draw a cylinder. On the other hand, given a cylinder, you can whip out all the properties that cylinder would have if it were made from aluminum, cold rolled steel, fiberglass etc. You'd be out of your job because I said you had to have a certain level of CAD expertise, even if it wasn't relevant to your role in the design process. 